All right, so here's what you need to know. And this is what everybody needs to know. And this is why I do this briefing, and this is why I want to go on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Anybody know Ellen? Anybody? Hook me up, man. Let's get going. Here's how it works. Credit freezes. Over the course of probably 10 years, states were little by little passing a law that allowed you to control when and if your credit report was given away to somebody. It's completely under your control. This is called a credit freeze. Now, the credit reporting companies, which are data brokers who specialize only in credit information, fought this for years. Why? Remember this. You are not the data broker's customer. You're their cattle. Okay? You are their source of income. They don't want you to control your data because if you did, you wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't be able to sell it to everybody. All those pre-approved credit card offers and all that garbage, they hate that. That's horrible for them. So they spent millions and millions and millions of dollars and hours and time fighting these laws, fighting these data protection laws, trying to keep you open and exposed so they could continue to make money off of you. That's the literal truth. It actually turned out in about 2007, about 27, 28 states had finally passed freeze laws and many more were in the works. It was only another year or two until 48 states had the freeze and there's only one or two left that don't. And I'm pretty sure Arizona is not one of those two. But uh, it doesn't really matter because in 2007, the credit reporting companies, all three of them, voluntarily decided to offer credit freezes to everybody at worse terms than any state law. Okay? But the way it works is, at most, do I have that all up here? Boom. And yeah. Uh, here, here's the process. You can uh, just do a Google search for credit security freeze and you'll get the same links, but I have them on my website too if you go there. You click each link that goes to each of the three major credit reporting companies, okay? And these are their freeze pages. They will spend about a page and a half explaining to you why freezing your credit's really a bad idea and you really don't want to do that because it'll totally delay that 10% that, you know, discount at Nordstrom's when you sign up for their card. Oh, pff, darn. Okay, so after they're done trying to convince you not to, there will be some instructions and you follow the instructions. You have to give them a bunch of data that they already have, so don't worry about it. Yes, they'll ask for social, give it to them, it's fine. Uh, make sure you're using HTTPS while you're doing this, by the way. You guys all know what that is, right? Because if you don't, you should. All right, make sure you have the protected connection. All right, <clears throat> follow the process, provide the information, pay the fee. The fee varies. The most you will pay is 10 bucks. This is not a monthly charge. This is one time ever. There's only a few states where that expires, and even then it's like seven years before it expires. But anyway, most you pay is 10 bucks. Okay, so you do that for all three. Ooh, 30 bucks, oh no. Now, don't fall for this crap where they're gonna try to upsell you. Oh, and include your credit score and monitoring for only $10 more. Now, my recommendation is to not do that. You're welcome to if you wanna waste money and not do anything for it, but you know, that's all your choice. So, uh, so you pay the fee. Now, what happens next is they're going to send you, oh, I, I forgot to mention, if you are a prior identity theft victim who has a police report or a uh, complaint that you've uh, filed with the Federal Trade Commission, some kind of proof, there's no cost for freezes in any state for the rest of your life. Just want to point that out. All right, so that aside, once you've completed the process properly, which honestly does not take very long, it's really easy, do it all online. They're going to send you a gigantic PIN number. It's like eight or ten digits long, and you don't get to choose it because they know you'd pick a stupid one. All right? So they send you this, this PIN number. Now, you remember back there where I said this is the list of data I need to rob you? Now I also need this PIN. Where the heck am I going to get that? I can get your name, address, social from all kinds of places, public records and all kinds of things. Where am I going to come up with an eight or ten digit PIN? That is not going to happen. So essentially, you're set. You store the freeze pin securely, you put it in a file cabinet or an encrypted file like I have, one of the two, whatever, but make sure you never give it to anybody. You can still access your credit the same as you always have. You still get your free credit reports from annualcreditreport.com, the only official website for that, by the way, the only one. Any attempts to access your credit by others is blocked. There are some exceptions. For instance, my bank can probably get to it because I have loans through them and what have you. So that existing credit relationship allows them to continue to get that information. But even my job, okay, my day job, I work for the government. And they had to ask my permission to check my credit. Man, that made me feel good. So these guys are doing my security clearance background investigation and they're doing everything secretly in the background interviewing people checking up on me and then they got to the credit reports and they couldn't go any further they had to call me and say uh, can you uh, take those freezes off I said no 
I'll unlock them temporarily, but I'm sure hell's not taking them off. And you're going to deal with it. And they said, okay. Yeah. Because that's how it should be. Data in your control, the risk goes away. So the files are locked until you thaw them. And this is how that would work. One, depending on the state. Now, not every state does it this way. But these are the two types of thaw. Let's say I want to go get, ooh, the new iPhone is at Verizon now. I, you know, I have to switch to them now for some reason because I, Apple told me to. So you go to the store and you ask them, who do you use for your credit checks? They're only going to use one company. You're not going to unlock all three. That would be dumb. Okay? So they say, oh, we use Equifax. Fine. So you go to Equifax, go on the website, you ask for a thaw. Understand, there may be a delay introduced here. You're going to have to think a little bit ahead. Oh, no. No more instant debt. Okay, I suppose that's kind of a disadvantage. Me, I don't really see it that way, but whatever. You provide the company name, your data, and the freeze pin. You may pay a fee, depending, depending on your state, depending on your circumstances, okay? And uh, usually it's the same. Whatever you paid to freeze it in the first place, the thaw costs the same. And then, and only then, is the company allowed to get to your data. Now, the way it works is they'll give you a four-digit temporary pin. You never, ever give your real pin to anybody, ever. If they ask for it, tell them no. Because the whole system security depends on that information not getting out. So what they do on the company-based thaw is they give you this four-digit temporary pin. So you go back to the store and you say, here's the pin you need to put in with the freeze request. And make sure you put your company's name on it because it's got a match. Under those two conditions, they're allowed to get to your credit one time. And that's it. That's a company-based thaw. The next one you can do, which is sometimes more convenient, is a time-based thaw. And that's what I did in my case with the security background investigation because I wanted to give them you know, time to get in there. I wanted to be reasonable. I said, I'll unlock it during this week. You have one week. Can you handle that? And they said yes. And it worked fine. So go to the website, ask for a thaw, provide the company name, your data, freeze pin, pay a fee. In my case, I had to. No big. Uh, choose the time period to be exposed. Now, during this time period, your credit files are unlocked. Anybody can get them. But it's a very small window of opportunity because once that time period expires, it just relocks automatically. Okay? That's the way it works. And in all other cases, they're locked, blocked, nobody can get to your credit. So freeze your credit reports. It's very simple to do. It's extremely cheap. It might be free. And if you have kids or plan to, you may need to lock theirs too because some people's identities get robbed before they've even graduated high school. The key here is that this actually blocks identity theft. Now, before I mention types of identity theft that are not credit-based, this can't help you with that, obviously. The key is it blocks the credit check, which in most cases blocks credit-based identity theft. And that is extremely powerful. If everybody did this, in my opinion, identity theft would essentially disappear overnight. It's really that simple. And this is why properly managing your information in databases is a good thing, and why people who are freely and loosely playing with your data without your consent, knowledge, or control is a bad thing, which is why those other data brokers make me very nervous. Because if the credit reporting companies who only manage credit information caused, in my opinion, caused identity theft. They caused the identity theft crisis. I'm wondering what those other guys are going to cause, which is why, by the way, it's not a bad idea to get out of those databases, which I could teach you more about if you